Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. (laughs) Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is as fond of sports as most of us, but somehow basketball was never one of her favorites. It isn't that I don't like basketball. I just hate it. (laughs) This aversion started when I was refereeing a game in teacher's college, and in the excitement, I swallowed the whistle. (laughs) Of course, it was only a small whistle, but it gets pretty embarrassing when every time you hiccup, traffic stops. (laughs) Anyway, last Wednesday morning, Mrs. Davis, my landlady, woke me a full hour earlier than usual. She told me that Walter Denton, the manager of the basketball team, was waiting to see me in the living room. If I could have had one free throw, I'd have thrown him out and gone back to sleep. But Mrs. Davis wouldn't let me. Come on now, Connie. The boy seems very concerned about something. You've got to see him. Oh, all right, Mrs. Davis. Where's my robe? I sent it out to the laundry, Connie. Here, I brought you one of mine to wear. This was part of my trousseau. I took it along on my honeymoon. Oh, we had a wonderful honeymoon. Just you in the bathroom? <laughs> no, uh, my husband was along. Heavens, didn't people talk? <laughs> he does love this robe. It's beautiful material, isn't it? Lovely. What is it exactly, Mrs. Davis? Ostrich feathers over seersucker? <laughs> No, dear, it's satin. And that big feather boy is worn around the neck. Here, slip it on. There. (laughs) Now you throw this boa around your neck. So. How do you like it, Connie? Very tasty. (laughs) Come on out into the living room, Connie. Walter's anxious to talk to you. All right. But I don't know why he has to drop around in the middle of the night like this. Here we are, Walter. While you're chatting with Miss Brooks, I'll fix us all a bite of breakfast. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Davis. Greetings, Miss Brooks. (laughs) What brings you out so early, Paul Revere? (laughs) British want their colonies back? (laughs) Normally, your witticisms would tickle my risibilities, Miss Brooks. But this morning, I've got to talk to you about something that's... Where did you go? (laughs) This boa just blew across my... is your problem this morning? Well, it's not really my problem, Miss Brooks. That is, it isn't my personal problem. But as the manager of the basketball team, I'm in big trouble. Is something wrong with the team, Walter? Oh, not the whole team, Miss Brooks. It's, well, it's just stretch. All right. (laughs) There, now what's the trouble? Uh, No, you don't understand, Miss Brooks. Stretch is our star player, one of the best forwards we've ever had. And he may not be eligible for the big game with Clay City High tonight. And that's why you've got to get in there and pitch. Well, I'd love to help out, Walter, but I'm afraid my midi blouse and bloomers must be moth-eaten by now. (laughs) Now, here's what... uh, Better blow again, Miss Brooks. It's back. (laughs) Thanks, Walter. (laughs) Breakfast, Nook, you two. Everything's ready. Coming, Mrs. Davis. We can continue this later on, Walter. Come on, let's eat. Well, I had breakfast before I left the house. Oh, then would you rather wait in the living room? Oh, no, that was over a half hour ago. (laughs) Hi, Mrs. Davis. Uh, Where do you want me to sit? Oh, uh, just sit right down here on my left, Walter. There. Now, would you like some eggs after you've eaten your oatmeal? Well, as I just told Miss Brooks, I already had some eggs and oatmeal at home. Oh, I see. So I'll just have some French toast. (laughs) You must come over for dinner some night after you've had dinner. (laughs) I'll make you some in a jiffy. Just drink your juice meantime. Say, this orange juice tastes rather peculiar. Now, that's because you're drinking it through that boa. (laughs) Better blow again. (laughs) Thanks. Now, to get back to my dilemma, Miss Brooks... Couldn't we delay after breakfast, Walter? <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you like this, but I'm afraid it's imperative. You see, Mr. Conklin's made a rule that anybody who fails a subject is ineligible for any sports until he's passed the first test of the new semester in the subject which he failed. And Stretch failed last term. So? So with a, with a teacher, Stretch has an English who's giving him the test this term, he doesn't stand a chance of passing. Who has he in English? Oh, Lady Enright. I mean, Miss Enright. <laughs> well, I'm sure Miss Enright's a very capable teacher. Well, here we are. Some nice French toast. 
I made it from a famous Turkish recipe. A Turkish recipe? Yes. The Turks are famous for their French toast, you know. They are? Of course they are, Walter. You should taste their Chinese kumquats. <laughs> Can I help you, Walter? I don't want to stuff myself, Mrs. Davis. Uh, those three pieces on the end will be plenty. And uh, now about Miss Enright. You know, I don't think it's fair for her to give Stretch a test. I heard she was jilted by a basketball player years ago. Walter, you shouldn't talk that way about Miss Enright. Just because someone doesn't reciprocate the affection of someone who's fond of them doesn't make the person who's fond of someone a monster. And I got that sentence from an old Turkish recipe. <laughs> Say, Miss Brooks, speaking of someone not reciprocating someone's affection, have you heard from Mr. Boynton lately? Ouch, get those punches up, Walter. <laughs> Let's forget about Mr. Boynton for now. Just what is it you want me to do? Hmm? Well, I was talking this over with Harriet Conklin, and we decided to get Stretch transferred out of Miss Enright's class. Of course, this means somebody's got to work on Harriet's old man. Look, Walter, Harriet's father happens to be our principal. You will kindly refer to him as Mr. Conklin. I'm oh, sorry, Miss Brooks. Well, Harriet and I and Stretch are supposed to meet at school this morning, and that's why I'm here so early, to discuss getting Stretch out of Miss Enright's class and into yours. Into mine? But you know how crowded my class is now. Every time I enter my room, it looks like payoff night at a pyramid club. <laughs> Brooks, they got to hurry down to school and meet Harriet. Now, there must be a way to get Stretch into your class so you can give him the test, while I, as manager of the team, sit across the aisle from him and give him moral support. Are you sure that's all you'd give him? Oh, I just want Stretch to feel at home. He's not very good in English, and, well, with me there, maybe he'd get more confidence. Confidence based on the mere proximity to one which in the same subject has always flourished so startlingly. If anybody sits near Stretch, it better be Harriet. She at least speaks English. <laughs> but she's so honest in tests. I mean, she has the most peculiar way of holding her left hand when she's writing down answers. Now, all you can see is her elbow. Oh, not that I ever tried to copy from her. Oh, no, of course not. It was just a coincidence that after the final exams last term, your neck was so far out of joint, you looked like a Balinese dancer. <laughs> Walter, as much as I'd like to help you kids, I can't. And the less I see of Mr. Conklin for a while, the better. But why, Miss Brooks? Because Mr. Conklin holds me responsible for what happened last week, remember? The fire in Mr. Boynton's laboratory, which started when the circuit was overloaded after I plugged in an electric heater that belonged to Mr. Conklin. Well, what is that? And then the firemen to... had to tear down the wall when they thought Mr. Conklin was stuck in the heater vent, which he wasn't because he was locked in the stock room when I slammed the door on him by accident. <laughs> and whose fault was that? Yours. That's what I like, a nice orderly mind. Come on. And so you see, Miss Brooks, without Stretch on the team, we'll probably lose the biggest game of the year. But what can I do about it? Oh, I told you, Miss Brooks, you can work on Harriet's old man. Walter, I told you not to use that expression. Okay, Mr. Conklin. But gosh, other kids have been transferred to other classes. Yes, but not for such a thin reason. Just to win a basketball game is oh, no but reason. but this is a Clay City game, and it wouldn't be so bad if the coach hadn't taken sick yesterday. The coach is sick, too? Desperately. This is the saddest thing since humoresque. Fortunately, we have an ex-basketball star teaching here who's been made temporary coach. But it would just break his heart if he lost his first game. Who is this coach, Harriet? Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton? Are you sure? Positive. Well, don't stand there, girl. We've got to go to work on your old man. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Want to win $49,000 in cash? That's right, $49,000 in cash. The first prize offered by the makers of Palmolive Soap in their big, exciting 49 Gold Rush contest. Second prize, $4,900. And there are 4,949 other cash prizes. What a chance to win. $100,000 in cash prizes, and it's easy to enter. Simply finish this sentence, I like Palmolive soap because, in 25 words or less. That's all. Just 25 words or less to finish the sentence, I like Palmolive soap because. Then mail your entry right away with a Palmolive soap wrapper. Easy, isn't it? And remember, thousands will strike it rich in this big 49 gold rush contest. Enter as often as you like. 
Get entry blanks and complete rules from your dealer or send your entries on plain paper with your name and address and dealer's name and address plus one palm olive wrapper for each entry. Mail to Gold Rush Contest, Box 49, New York 8, New York. You better write that down. Gold Rush Contest, Box 49, New York 8, New York. Get palm olive soap right away to help win a lovelier complexion and try for your share of the $100,000 in cash prizes. Well, I realized that some ancient gossip about Miss Enright's prejudice against basketball players would never cause Mr. Conklin to give Stretch a transfer. But after a brief council of war during study period, I hit upon what seemed like a pretty good plan. I would tell Mr. Conklin that the boy was unhappy in his class because his fellow students were picking on him, as I told Walter and Harriet. In a democratically operated high school, no boy should be forced to remain in surroundings that are not conducive to his getting the most out of the school curriculum. Bravo, Miss Brooks, bravo. Yeah, bravo. What did you say? (laughs) Now, when Stretch gets here, we'll have to find out just what annoys him the most in his English class. Oh, that's him now. Come in, Stretch. Hi, Stretch. You know Miss Brooks. Hi. Hi. We haven't too much time, so I'll come right to the point. What bothers you in Miss Enright's class? Bothers me? Yeah, they treat you terrible, don't they? The other kids, I mean. The other kids? (laughs) They pick on you and call you names, don't they? Names? (laughs) This is the most backward forward I ever met. Look, the kids do call you one name we all know about, Stretch. Now, why do you suppose they tack that on you? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's because I weigh 112 pounds and I'm six foot five. <laughs> Serves me right for getting over the flu last year. <laughs> Look, we're trying to help you become eligible for the Clay City game. You want to play in it, don't you? I sure do, Miss Brooks. There isn't anything I wouldn't well, do then to... then keep quiet and listen. Sorry, Walter. Go ahead, Miss Brooks. Well, first of all, I hate nicknames. What's your real name? Fabian Snodgrass. (laughs) Fabian Snodgrass? That's right. Look, Stretch. (laughs) We really want to help you. The kids here feel that if I give you the exam, you'll stand a better chance of passing. Not that there's going to be any funny business, you understand. Oh, I understand perfectly, Miss Brooks. Walter wouldn't want any part of anything that wasn't strictly on the up and up. You said it, Stretch. You just listen to old Walter and you'll be all right. I always do, don't I, Walter? You're our manager and you always know what's best for all of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. (laughs) And if you don't listen, Walter won't tell you about the rabbits anymore. (laughs) But let's get back to your scholastic achievements, or lack of them. What subjects did you pass last term? All of them, but English. Just barely, but I passed them. And I can't understand why I didn't pass English. I always done my homework very good. (laughs) Very well. Very well. Stretch, uh, isn't it true that you couldn't always do your work properly because of the other pupils harassing you? I ain't never worked near as hard at any subject as I done in English, hardly. (laughs) But, uh... It wasn't all your own fault that you failed. There were other students in the class, all kinds of students, doing all kinds of things. Yeah, they were a swell bunch of kids, all right. But you know something, Miss Brooks? It it wasn't the grammar that done it. No? Then what did done it? Done did it. Who did it? How's everything? It it was the composition that made Miss Enright flunk me. We was allowed to pick our own theme. We were allowed to pick our own theme. Used to, huh? (laughs) Like I said, we could write about anything we wanted, so I got my idea off on the radio. It's not very bright of me to ask, but uh, what kind of a radio idea did you write about? I wrote in 25 words or less, I hate English because... Mr. Conklin, uh, can I speak to you for a moment? If you know how to speak at all, you can. But if it's permission you want, you may. 
Sorry, Mr. Conklin. I haven't taken English since I was a girl. But I'd, uh, I'd like to request a transfer for one of the students here. He's in Miss Enright's class at the present time. But, Miss Brooks, the new term has already started. You know we can't issue any transfers at this late date. Oh, but this case is extraordinary, Mr. Conklin. A boy's life is being made miserable by his classmate. What boy? Fabian Snodgrass. They call him all sorts of names. Anything worse than Fabian Snodgrass? <laughs> well, for one thing, they call him Stretch. Stretch? What's so terrible about that? I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, I can't do anything for you. But, Mr. Conklin, he failed English last term because of the conditions in Miss Enright's class. And if she fails him in his test this term, he won't be eligible for athletics. Athletics? And... There's too much emphasis on athletics in the school system now. No, Miss Brooks, the boy stays where he is. Uh, come in. Well, hello, O.C. I, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't know you were busy. Oh, uh, come in, J.B., come in. Miss Brooks, this is Jason Brill, principal of Clay City High. How do you do, Mr. Brill? How do you do, Miss Brooks? What brings you all the way to Madison, J.B.? Well, everything's running so smoothly at Clay City, I thought I'd drop over and find out how things were with you. I heard you had a fire over here last week. A fire? Oh, it was nothing at all, really. No, oh, indeed. Some teacher just blew a fuse, that's all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got yourself locked in the storeroom, too, didn't you? Uh, <clears throat> perhaps you'd better go into my inner office. If uh, you'll excuse us, Miss Brooks. But I still want to talk to you, Mr. Conklin. I'll talk to you later. Just wait here in my outer office. All right, Mr. Conklin. I'll wait right here. Are uh, you sure I'm not disturbing you, Osgood? That teacher out there, a pretty bit of baggage, isn't she? <laughs> yes, she is. I'd like to check her sometime. <laughs> Well, Osgood, uh, we haven't seen each other since the big Clay City Madison High football game. We gave you a good drubbing in that one, 79 to nothing, wasn't it? It was not. It was 78 to nothing. <laughs> but we had a good excuse for losing that one. Yes, I know. Your team showed up. <laughs> that was nothing to what our basketball team is going to do to you tonight. Why, we should win by 40 points. What? Why, we'll wipe up the gym with you. Uh, you care to make a little wager on that, Osgood? I'm not a betting man, and you know it. Oh, come on, Osgood. Just to make things interesting, how about a nice new hat to the winner? Well, I do need a new hat. Uh, you're on, J.B. Fine. Well, I'll be running along now. See you at the game tonight. May the best team from Clay City win. Oh, uh, you haven't a chance. Oh, well, you're still here, Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Conklin. Well, uh, goodbye, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Mr. Brill. Oh, and Oscar. Yes? If you want to, you can check her with me sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Old reprobate. Now then, Miss Brooks, come to the point. Just what do you want me to do about this, uh, this... Uh, Stretch. Uh, Stretch Snodgrass. Just because a kid happens to be a star basketball player is no reason for other kids to make fun of him. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I can't change the rules in the middle of a semester just on account of some star basketball player. After all, there are other students in this school who... 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 Who did you say star basketball player? Yes, sir. And if he passes a test today, he's eligible for the game tonight? That's right, Mr. Conklin. And your own daughter, Harriet, and Walter, and everybody seems to think that he'll have a better chance if I give him the examination. Miss Brooks, in a democratically operated high school, no boy should be forced to remain in surroundings that are not conducive to his getting the most out of the school <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> I'll have him transferred at once. Uh, there's just one thing I insist on. Yes, Mr. Conklin? The test must be absolutely impartial. At Madison, we have just one standard procedure, one examination. With liberty and justice for all. Come on, Walter. There's Mr. Boynton. Okay, Harriet. Oh, pardon us, Mr. Boynton, but the cafeteria's pretty packed today. Oh, yes, I know. Why don't you sit at this table with me? Now, that's what I call taking the bait. I mean, thanks, Mr. Boynton. Uh, we wanted to talk to you before Miss Brooks came up. 
You see, Stretch is taking his English test in Miss Brooks' free period, right after lunch. Oh, but I thought Stretch was in Miss Enright's class. He was, but Daddy transferred him because he doesn't want the boy to be unhappy. Now it's up to us, especially you as basketball coach, to see that Miss Brooks is in a very good mood when she gives him the test. Maybe she'll even let us be there. But uh, what can I do? Well, just be nice. You know, even if she doesn't order salad, spread a little oil around. <laughs> Always courteous to Miss Brooks. Well, then be more than courteous. Be, uh, be civil. Well, what my attitude toward Miss Brooks has to do with... She's coming over now. Be terribly nice. Remember, this is the biggest game you'll ever coach. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Well, how do you do, Miss Brooks? How are you, Harriet, Walter? Oh, we're fine, Miss Brooks. Oh, won't you join us? Oh, sit right here by Mr. Boynton. I'll move the chairs closer together. There. Thank you. Now then, what looks good today? You do, Miss Brooks. You look simply lovely. Well, that's high praise coming from you, Walter. It should have come from you, Mr. Boynton. Hmm? <laughs> uh, Miss Brooks, if you'll just tell me what you want, I'll go get your tray filled up. I really haven't given it much thought. Well, neither have I. That's one nice thing about having a perfect figure. You can eat anything. Oh, I don't think my figure's so perfect. <laughs> You, Mr. Boynton, Miss Brock. Here, let me wipe off the table in front of you. No, pass me those glasses of water, will you, Walter? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Here's one for you, Miss Brooks. Oh, here, Miss Brooks. Take my knives and forks, too. I'm not hungry just yet. I am. I'm starved. I'd eat some roast beef today if it wasn't so expensive. Expensive? What's that got to do with anything? Mr. Boynton's treating you. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the water. Uh, it must have gone down the, the wrong pipe. Yeah, the pipe that likes to go Dutch. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate this attention, but there's something I think you all ought to know. What's that? I'm giving Stretch his eligibility test in private. In private? That's right. And if you'll meet me after school, I'll refund all courtesies extended to me during this lunch period. <laughs> Now, Stretch, you say you've completed the written portion of the examination? Yes, ma'am. To the best of my ability. I was afraid of that. <laughs> well, put the papers to one side and we'll get into the oral test. Oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks. What do you want, Walter? I forgot my rubbers. Oh, don't pay any attention to me, though. Just keep going. Hi, Stretch. Never mind that. Sorry. You're on your own, kid. I'll just look around over here. Well, keep away from Stretch. First question. I just want to come in for a minute, Miss Brooks. For what, Harriet? I lost my fountain pen. I'm sure it's in one of these desks. Oh, you go right ahead, Miss Brooks. Hi, Stretch. Hi, Harriet. Why don't you look over here by me? Cut that out. Where do you think you are? <laughs> well, she's pretty. Good thing that wasn't one of the test questions. Look, Stretch, you're fond of radio shows. Now, just make believe you're on a quiz program. I beg your pardon, Miss Brooks, but I think I left a book in here. This test should have been given in the Rose Bowl. Well, sit right down, Mr. Boynton. Stretch is about to get the oral test. Oh, well, I'll be very quiet, Miss Brooks. So will Stretch, I'm afraid. <laughs> but here goes. Question one. Name three plays by William Shakespeare. William who? <laughs> Shakespeare. He was a tall, thin fellow with a little goatee. Oh, him. Three plays, huh? Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, maybe I shouldn't look for my rubbers now. Uh, maybe it's just much ado about nothing. Walter! <laughs> much ado about nothing? He said it, Miss Brooks. That's one answer right. Go ahead, Stretch. Think of another one. Another one? Um... Don't make any mistakes now. This could easily become a comedy of errors. <laughs> a comedy of errors? Good for you, Stretch. Now, now, just one more. <laughs> Boynton, I'm surprised at you giving a pupil hints in a private test. But, Miss Brooks, I didn't say anything. I'm just rooting for the boy. Oh, well, I guess this is something of a tempest in a teapot. <laughs> I, I think I got the third one, Miss Brooks. What is it? Teapot. <laughs> that is absolutely wrong. Would you like to try for tempest? Yeah, tempest. Next question. <laughs> 
What plays did Shakespeare write between the two entitled Pericles, Prince of Tyre, and Coriolanus? Where did everybody go? <laughs> would, would you repeat the question, please? Certainly. What plays did Shakespeare write between the two entitled Pericles, Prince of Tyre, and Coriolanus? Um... Uh, well, don't stand there. Think, boy, think! <laughs> well, Mr. Conklin, I have the result of both tests, written and oral. Good, good. Just put everything on my desk here. I'm not even going to check these papers, Miss Brooks. I'm that sure of your integrity. Thank you, Mr. Conklin, but as you know, we weren't alone I never the mind test. that, Miss Brooks. The examination was based on the 100% system. That's right, but every once in a while, somebody Please, would... please, Miss Brooks. It's all done with. Uh, passing is 65%, is that correct? Yes, sir. Fine. Now, what was the boy's mark? 39. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I would like you to jot down my latest ruling on eligibility for athletic activities. <laughs> Proceed, Mr. Conklin. No student who has previously failed a subject will be eligible for any athletic team if he fails the first two tests in any term. Mr. Conklin, may I say that I have never seen such touching concern for the hopes and ambitions of Madison students. Well, thank you, Miss Brooks. I remember when I was a boy... Oh, and one hard... more thing, Mr. Yeah. Conklin. Uh, yes? When you get your new hat, wear it in good health. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumit's magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable, gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, we gave the Clay City team a pretty thorough drubbing. And right after the game, I congratulated Mr. Boynton. Honestly, Mr. Boynton, I thought you did a superb job of coaching. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks, but the kids deserve most of the credit. They played a great game. Yes, they did. You know something, Mr. Boynton? I haven't been so excited at a basketball game since I swallowed a whistle in teacher's college. Well, Miss Brooks, that's pretty serious. What did you do about it? Nothing, but I intend to see a doctor about it <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> Brought to you by Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palmolive shaving cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palmolive way to shave described on the tube, and no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palmolive Brushless or Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.